Alright, so it's on pause. Basically, a backstory of what happened was her parents fell in love and they plan on settling down. They were planning on having a child, then one day fate decides to change, and so er, when the husband came home, the wife was gone. And she's been gone for a couple of years, but the police come up to him with info that that she's still alive, but she was not alone. The co-worker, the co-worker has kidnapped her. And after that, what happened was they found they found the kid, they found the the wife and all, but they did not find the culprit. Um. Like, he first accepts the fact that, hey, I'll take my family, who, however they are right now, but shit changed. And they no longer love each other, hell, the uh, father doesn't see the daughter as his child anymore, so at one point he gets an anonymous tip where his co-worker location is, he did not go tell the police. He took a gun and shot him 13 times, or 47 times, I don't remember the number, in the chest. And well, things got worse after that. And afterwards, she really couldn't fit in in school. She didn't know how to. She didn't really talk to anyone at all. Her parents somewhat blame her for all this. Anyway, continue. Thing on. Okay, Sarah, I'll put these in my backpack for now. I'll look at them. Well, technically, I looked at them now. Thank you. Suddenly, within her backpack, her phone rang. <laughs> it couldn't help but face palm this. So that hurt. Bruno Mars, you're as bad. This is bad as my mom. I can't believe you have. Anyway, you two have the same ringtone. She practically squealed in embarrassment as she fished her on the back by quickly tearing out the battery. She sheepishly put the battery in her pocket and looked down at her feet. She dashed out of my house before I could respond. Her form disappeared into the snow wasteland, slamming the door behind her. I sat stunned for a good minute. Where the hell did that come from? She didn't even take a coat with her! Imagine her in just a t-shirt and the brutal cold made me want to run after her. But I knew she was long gone at that point. <sighs> well, it was past 12. The school would have been called by now by, about my absence if I was if it had been a school day. I'll let myself relax a little more. But it wasn't quite enough. The entire day just a bit too much to handle. Maybe I was just worrying too much. Hmm. Okay. Part of me wants to just want to relax, but I don't watch TV because. <laughs> I sat on the couch, mindlessly flickering through channels. There's nothing good on. My phone suddenly buzzed. What? Who could be texting me? I hadn't texted Max. Pulling out my phone, I realized my it just ran out of batteries. <sighs> this is going too far enough. Even if there was school today, Max would have been home by now. For him to keep me this joke up for so long. Hmm. Let's call him. I don't think any of the messages will be left on. Groaning, I stood up and picked up my house phone. Dalton. I tried again. Dalton. Frustrated, I look at the monitor. No service at red. What? It was a landline. How is it even possible? I have a feeling Sarah just 
messed around with the phone wires that are conveniently placed upstairs. Or... No way, I came from upstairs, didn't I? I don't know. Must have something to do with the storm. Am I tripping, or is that, is that Hiyuna Mazawa? Just a picture of it, just scrapped up. Uh, do I, maybe no one is reading the... Wait, what? What? <laughs> uh, I suddenly realized that I should... Be, I should have been checking the news. And I hope we have information about the possibility of a school. Okay, TV flashing some random shit. That that the shit the storm was going to. Was going to oh, wait, I have only one option: check the news. Obviously, I flipped to the channel. I wish I could see it. Mart practically stopped. I only heard the end. Tail end. No, not releasing images, no further details requiring the bus. It's not. The camera switched. They began to talk about the highway conditions. I feel absolutely horrible. Sickness gripping me. It couldn't be. Could it? Surely that little dialogue I've heard couldn't have been about. That would be ri that would be ridiculous. I wasn't even sure what I heard. I was definitely overreacting, after all. Someone called me worried about the massacre. Whoa! Massacre! Damn. Not if the police aren't releasing details about where and when it took place. Mm. The school didn't report me absent. That's because my health. Oh, yeah. Obviously. We're just clicking all the options here. <laughs> Max is playing a joke. That's why I didn't even ever text Max. Nothing I said myself made me feel any better. I tried to. I tried in vain to calm myself down. I'm not quite. I quickly realized that I had no for sure. A stock house, a house shook with gust of winds, tremors being sent down every dark hallway. Oh, this sounds like a horror movie! We're in a horror situation! Everybody keep Calm, do not go investigate anything, because that will lead you to your imminent, most prominent death. Gruesome as possible. I stood up from my couch, slowly glancing at the snow, beginning to plaster on the windows. All through gray and dull flicks seemed to glow against the oppressive darkness as time fell. I thought I could enunciate that word correctly. Anyway. The frigid night air seemed to ripple with heat distortion as the door swung open. Oh god! I locked the door behind me and fumbled the keys into my pockets with shaking hands. I've been walking the route the bus would have taken my, my pace slow. The sickness growing worse with every crunch of snow under my feet. The dim light from my house was becoming more and more distant. Disappearing, although as I turned the corner, it was just me and the flurry snow. The skeletal trees surrounding me groaned against the wind. Their twisted black shapes were silhouetted against the deep blue hue of the night. I haven't seen them in that house for some time now. The families in the neighborhood were exceedingly spread apart and empty stretches of road seemed to snake off on forever at points. More often than not, snow plows didn't even feel, find the time to drive as deep into the community that I was going. I slowly came to a hesitation shaking my heart. Oh, 
Turning back isn't really an option, is it? I'm gonna save the game. At this point, because what could happen here? I might return to that to see more possibilities, but we're gonna keep going. Even though I just said, hey, we should go check things out. This is coming a horror movie situation. We could possibly die. But we're gonna do it. I could stop here. <laughs> I had come this far. Oh, it was snowing quite heavily, but I was certain I would be able to faintly see the tracks of the bus if it had driven anywhere. Despite this, I haven't even seen the track for over a mile. Only oh, your cars rarely ever drove up the way I was walking. And yet, I noticed the railway was layered with tracks of smaller vehicles. They looked fresh. That's when I saw something up ahead barely visible in the haze. Oh, I'm gonna stop it here because I haven't I have to edit this all, so. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, check out my links down below. And have a nice day, night, if it's a birthday, have a birthday. I, I, I just, I really hope you enjoy this, because this seems pretty awesome. Even though I know my death is coming. But yeah, peace out. Oh, it's, um... I think pretending to drink it will get me killed, and drinking some would also get me killed.